Hello everyone. This is the second part of the four part video series on how to build an IP KVM using a Raspberry Pi and a Geek Worm KVM hyphen A3 kit. In this video, we'll discuss the steps necessary to actually load the Raspberry Pi KVM image on the SD card and prep the software to be loaded on the Raspberry Pi device. I hope you enjoy watching the videos and please don't forget there's two more additional videos after this one. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what I'm going to use to program my SD card. I have this uh, and I'll provide a link to this on there too. I bought this off of Amazon. It's kind of like a multi-card reader. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this up to my computer and get things ready. So I got that thing plugged up now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to flip over to my screen here to get started. The very first thing we want to do is go to pikvm.org, pikvm.org. And we are going to walk through this process together. We're going to go to download. Before I do that, let me open up geekworm.com. All right, so I, I'm going to provide a link in the description. This link provides um, information regarding this particular build. Uh, we've already went through most of it in the video whenever I assembled it all together. All right. So what I wanted to get to is actually downloading the actual software. So down here, it says you'll need an SD card. You'll need a minimum of 16 gigs, class 10 memory card. Uh, you'll download the appropriate OS image, which is the V3 pre-assembled all right, so we are going to go to that website, which is pikvm.org slash downloads, and I'll provide a link to this in, in the description as well. All right, you're going to go to the V3 pre-assembled. You're going to click it. It's going to download. All right, it is finished. We're going to open it up. I'm going to just move this distro to my desktop over here so we have it to work with. It says we need to flash it to the memory card. All right. I will show how to flash it. I generally use an app. Yeah, you can use this app too. This app will work. The um, RPI, the Raspberry Pi Imager. I want to download the Imager executable. I'm going to open that up and move it to my desktop. You got to install this. So we're going to go install. All right, it should open up now. All right, so this is what you get. All right, so now. What you do is you click choose storage and I'm going to select the 64 gig SD card that is in my SD card reader. I'm going to click choose OS and I am going to tell it I'm going to provide a custom image and it is on my desktop. So over here, I'm going to click up here. Uh, let's see. It's on my username on my desktop, and it is this image right here. This HDMI RPI 4. Click open, click right. All existing data will be lost on this. That's fine. Click yes. And it is going to write that image to that card. It looks like it's stuck at 5%. All right, so if you get stuck at 5%, just wait a little bit. It will continue. It's going. It's just slow. Well, it looks like it got stuck. I don't know why this image is taking forever to write. All right, we are almost done imaging the SD card. 
I will tell you that it takes a while to image this SD uh, card. It takes a while to extract this image to this SD card. I'm not sure why, but it took over 20 minutes for me. And I have a super fast computer, so I don't know if maybe my SD card's damaged or if maybe it just took a while because this is a highly compressed image file. Not really sure, but if it takes a while for you, don't get scared. It seemed to lock up around 5%, then it locked up around 79%, and then it appeared to lock up around 85%. So uh, I'm guessing there's some sort of process it's doing to unpack those files. It just takes a while. All right, so now it's going to verify the image. That may take a few seconds, but that should go pretty quick. All right, it is now officially finished. All right, so the next part, the next part is I actually need to eject that SD card and place it into the raspberry pi kvm and boot it up so let me do that now all righty so very carefully put that card in there i'm gonna have to use something to push it down in there because it's recessed in there a little ways All right, let me go get my power supply. When you connect this thing up, there's a couple of things to note. On these Raspberry Pis, generally, everybody, um, generally everybody, these are the ports on the Raspberry Pi 4. Generally, everybody uses this port right here to provide power. It's labeled OTG. You do not want to power this through that port. On the front side, on the front side, they have added an additional USB-C power port on, on that expansion card that you uh, mount to the top. That is where you want to power up the device. Also, when it's time to connect your Ethernet, do not connect it to this ATX port. Connect it to the one at the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. All righty. We have lights. Sorry, the camera's not focusing here, but it has some writing on the screen. I'll read you what it says. On boot setup, do not interrupt. Please wait. And then it says hello. All right, so now it shows, it says localhost, it shows um, interface, uh, shows uptime, temperature. All right, it's giving me an IP address. So now what we're going to have to do is go back. I'm going to have to figure this out because there's some additional steps we have to take. All right, so I think I figured it out. Some of this information I don't think pertains. So it says to install the C1220 button battery, but that's that that's that battery port that I had saw on that board, but they did not include a battery with it. So I'm guessing it's not necessary. And looking through some of the other information on a couple of the websites, nobody else seems to have installed it either. So I guess for now, I'm going to bypass this step. And we are going to skip uh, this portion of the... Uh, we are going to skip this portion of the instructions, which is to enable the real-time clock. Um, the real-time clock, I don't think, is necessary for this to work. However, this right here is, we want the OLED uh, display to work. Uh, but it says, if you are using this Pi KVM, it's already on there, so we don't have to do that either because it's working as well. So... Uh, I believe maybe this is all the steps that we need to take at this point. Well, thank you for following along with us in our video part two. 
on how to image the Raspberry Pi KVM. So I wanted to clarify one last thing before we go to part three. The very last part of that video, there was a command to run to get the LED screen to work. But if you look at the verbiage on that instructional page, which I'll include in the description of this video, it states that if you're using the Raspberry Pi KVM uh, V3 that we chose, that you do not have to run that command because it's already included in the, in the image build. So once you load that Raspberry Pi KVM image to the SD card, there's no additional configuration you need to do. That makes it super easy and super simple. The additional steps that was included on that instructional page, um, you can disregard because it's already part of that version three assembled image there. Thanks again for watching. I will include links to the Geekworm KVM kit, as well as Raspberry Pi and other items used for this video. Uh, please know that the links I provide in the description below, they are Amazon affiliate links and they help support this channel. I appreciate everyone who has been purchasing via the affiliate links as it helps support the channel here. Thanks again for watching and please don't forget to check out video three and four.